Hello, grifters and grindstones. My name is TB Skyn, and hey, look, it's Elden Ring. Now, curb your excitement. I am not actually be going to do be doing anything exciting at all um, in this particular little recording. No, see, because um, I'm getting through the footage I've recorded so far fast enough that now, at this point, it's starting to get to the point where maybe I can actually start playing the actual freaking goddamn video game again for my boss the signs of elden ring series which would be lovely um but one thing i've noticed like i've, I've been going back over the footage obviously of me playing the game um for the past long 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 ass time one thing i've noticed is that my stats are not at all where i would like them to be and so the choices I was sort of thinking about, okay, do I want to completely, what, like, wanna, do I want to go to the Renala and completely respec? Well, no, that would have to be part of an episode because that's a major part of the theme of the game, right? Like, that's a thing about death and rebirth kind of thing. Um, or do I just want to grind for a few levels to get my vigor up to, like, 40, which I believe is, like, the, the, the initial soft cap that you'll probably want to be at and maybe get my faith up a few points maybe for an incantation or two possibly and i landed on the second option which is to go and do some god's damned grinding and the place i'm gonna go do that grinding is uh, somewhere we'll have to, a place i've discovered or a method i've discovered which is very easy fairly risk-free um, but which does require me to traverse Kaled without getting killed a little bit, which fortunately shouldn't be that much of a problem. I'm also taking this as an opportunity just to sort of reacquaint myself with controls a little bit. I have been playing bits of Elden Ring on and off, even while I wasn't, you know, uh, progressing on boss designs. Poison trap time. Um, even while I wasn't progressing on boss designs, where I just would roll up new characters, and I would just play through the bits of Elden Ring that I'd already played through on this file. Um, and sort of just re-experience all the stuff I've, I've experienced already, like 10, 15, 20 times. So there's a Knight's Cavalry down here who you can kill by leading him up through all the poison traps and just, like, letting the, the poison damage kill him. It's, like, a, it's a reasonably easy way to get, uh... to get a big chunk of runes early on. You can also grind by killing the, the little dudes there, but I don't want to do that. So the grind I have found relies on, and I found, I didn't find it by, like, exploring the game and being clever. I found it by reading up on the internet on where, where exactly it is. And how exactly to do it. And it's a boulder down here. Which appears, it's a little funny, funny appearance trap. Which appears rolls, and if you make it fall off a cliff, boom, 2,000 easy runes. Well, more or less 2,000 easy runes, and then you just teleport back to the... Grace to reset things. Hop on torrent back. Rinse, lather, repeat. This is like the sort of easiest, most brain-dead... You do have to be careful that the boulder doesn't hit something before it falls over the edge, because if it doesn't fall over the edge, you don't get runes. Uh, this is, like, the easiest, most brain-dead grind I know of in Elden Ring. Like, the easiest way to grind up a few levels when you need them. And that begs the question of what kinds of levels do I need? Because, like, I want to get my vigor up Somewhat. Like, I want to get it at least to, like, 30, 32, something like that, right? So that's, we're looking at four, six levels, something like that, and that's 
probably 20 to 30,000 runes each. That's a bunch of runs of this thing. And so that's what's going to be happening. I'm mostly just documenting it so that I have full documentation for everything I do, or like almost everything I do, with my character in Boss Designs of Elden Ring. But this this footage will not be included in uh, in any kind of an episode. Because this is just like normally, I, like on my other files, like I, there was one I like I wanted to try and see like different builds in terms of. Um, what it feels like to play Sorcerer, for example. So I bought all the sorceries I get from Selen. And pumped, like, did this grind a whole fuck ton. To pump into the stats that I'd need. Um, Just to sort of try and see what it was like with, with, like to play, play as a sorcerer. And then I used spells um, to, like, tear down Market and Renala. That was fun enough. Like, I can see why people would play Sorcerer in this game. But it's... I also sort of... I also realized that it's just not my playstyle. I need... I need Big Sword. I need Big Smack Smack Stick. For two hits. And punch. And crack over the head. Do 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 do. Whee. But I guess while I'm doing this, I can just, like, vlog? <laughs> Talk about whatever, I guess. Um, because, like, I've, I've been dying real easy. Like, I've really been getting one and two shot by shit. As I was trying to go through in my playthrough. And it's mostly because, like, back when I was playing the game, like, that was literally when it was first right came out, right? Like, that was... I recorded all of that footage in one huge chunk right as the game was releasing. Um, and a whole bunch of shit has changed, of course, now in patches and stuff since that. Like, the performance is much better, for one thing. Um, but also, I didn't really know about... Like, optimal stat builds and shit like that. Like, I didn't know that 40 Vigor was like, you need that fucking health to survive in Elden Ring. Because, like, I felt like in Bloodborne and Dark Souls, having enough health never really felt close to mind for me. Right? Like, it was like, yeah, I'd probably want to level up and get some health out of it, but it never really felt like the crucial stat, right? Like, like health never felt like the stat I need to have in order to just get by. Um, Elden Ring, as I've learned, is a lot more... It's, like, a lot more interested in you having enough health to survive what the bosses are gonna be doing to you. Um, and so I just wanna buff that up to, like... 30-something. This is a lot more efficient if you have uh, some of the... Well, do I actually? I don't remember what the hell I have. Even. I guess I've put a lot of stuff away in the... item box. Let's see. Like, I don't have any... Uh, switch. I don't have like any. I think there's a hat, but like, and some other gear that'll increase your rune. Thing, but. I don't think I really have any of the rune enhancing anything. 
I do have a few gold pickled. I don't know if those last through teleportation. Well, let's find out. Let's find out. No point, no point not using them, huh? I also don't know how long they last. Like, because if I can only get... Is how much does that boost it? Oh, about 500 runes. Okay, that's not a bad. That's not bad. But it seems to have been unapplied immediately upon teleportation. Well, then that's not really worth it, is it? Almost put myself over the edge there. Damn it. See, that one I'm not going to get because it crashed into a thing instead. I was saying something, though. I was... Right, like, the game is much more vigor dependent. It's much more health dependent on you, like, having at least enough health to not get one shot by some of the... some of the bigger swings from enemies. And probably by the end of the game, I'm probably going to want to get up to 60, which is the other soft cap for health. Just, like, because I don't, I don't know that I have much of a chance against Melenia without it. <laughs> without a lot of extra health to work from. Hey, bonus runes from the dead deer. I am anxious to get back to it, though. Like, that whole fucking year I ended up taking away from Boss the Signs of Elden Ring. I mean, it's tedious. Like, if you follow my channels, you've heard me talk about it to a probably a tedious degree. But the fucking ADHD diagnosis, man. It really, it really did change everything for me. Like, in terms of just how I... How I understand myself. How I conceptualize my condition, right? Like, like it, it explains so much about... As I've been reading about what ADHD is and what it does and how it causes the brain to behave in response to stimuli. Um, it has clarified so many fucking things. It really has. ...about why my brain behaves the way that it does. Because, like, one of the things that happened with Boston Science of Elden Ring is that... I have this... I have this constant tug of war inside of me, right? Of... This is what I'm excited to work on. This is what I want to do right... Oh, fuck me. I got blocked by Weather Deer. <laughs> um... Yeah, that death doesn't count for the get good counter. Um, I have this constant tug of war inside of me between like this is the thing I want to do, this is what ex is exciting me right now, this is what I'm this is what I'm hyped for, this is what I want to do, and then, um, like this sense of yeah, but this is what I should be doing, right? Like there's this thing I I ought to do, there's this job I need to get done, there's this project that I ought to work on, and. Especially with my YouTube channel, um, that has often been a push and pull between... Because I was excited just to do Elden Ring. Like, I really... I had the burning want within me to just pivot to an Elden Ring channel for a while and just do that. Like, not do anything else, just only Elden Ring videos. But I was also looking at the analytics, which were like, Yeah, no, your Elden Ring episodes, <laughs> they, they, they do shit numbers, dude, next to any League of Legends themed anything. And so the, 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 the push and pull for me, and that, like, that's been the case for Boss Designs forever. Like, League of Legends is the moneymaker on my channel. That's just the way it is. Um, like, same thing with that Taylor Swift video I put out recently. It's like, it, it's done better than I thought, but it's like, it's not what the algorithm has pigeonholed my channel as, and it's not what it wants. Like, it doesn't, oh, it's a Taylor Swift channel from a, Le uh, Taylor Swift video from a League of Legends channel. Who the fuck do I serve this to? Which I understand. Like, it's like, do you want to serve a video about Taylor Swift from a League of Legends channel to Swifties? Like, is that... Like, when you think about that objectively out from, like, an outside perspective, it's like, no, probably not. Like, that doesn't sound like, like something that they would like or engage with, right? Like, so it's understandable that the algorithm doesn't know what the fuck to do with it. 
Um, and it's that thing of like, of like, so I've, I've, I've had this balancing act I've had to do of, I ought to make League of Legends videos. I want to make Elden Ring videos, right? And that just, that tension built and built and built and built um, for ages until, and this is the thing that happens in, in certainly in my ADHD brain, until my brain sort of went, well, fuck it then. Like, I, it, it sort of, like, it sort of began to identify Elden Ring as a source of misery and discomfort, right? Like, because every single time I was like, I want to do Elden Ring, I want to do Elden Ring, I want to do Elden Ring, but I have to do League of Legends, but I have to do, I have to do, like, like profitable, sort of sensible, algorithm-pleasing videos um, because I need to make my fucking rent, right? Um, and what, what happened was that eventually Elden Ring videos as a concept just became associated with so much guilt and so much frustration and so much upset and so much, like... Just, just like unpleasant feelings and bad associations that I just like even when I did have space to work on even when it's like okay I've done a League of Legends video or two now there's room for an Elden Ring video every time I sat down to try and work on them it just my brain just went yeah, 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 bad feelings right because that association had been so strongly established, like, every time I sat down to work on an Elden Ring video, I would, even though it was like, I have done the League of Legends videos, I have done, like, the, the sensible main channel videos thing, and now there's room for the Elden Ring video, even though I did that, it always, f I constantly had this, no, no, you ought to do, you ought to do the sensible, responsible video, you ought to do the thing that pleases the algorithm, you ought to, that was always there, and so, Elden Ring just became a chore. It just became a chore. It just became this, this this really negative thing in my head that I didn't know how to emotionally deal with, right? Because I, st I kept getting comments, right, from people saying, Hey, is Elden Ring coming back? When is Elden Ring? Are we ever going to get more Elden Ring? Um, and those comments just added to the distress because it's like, I really want to, right? I want to, rationally speaking, I want to, but emotionally, I just could not figure out why the fuck I was so constipated about it, right? Like, I, I I, had all these feelings about this fucking thing that didn't make any fucking sense. Like, it didn't make any sense why I was feeling this way. It was like, the fuck kind of way is that to feel about anything, right? Um, but, but what it is, in the final analysis, is like, oh, that's the ADHD brain trying to, like... I think I got blocked by a rock that time. Uh, that's the ADHD brain trying to deal with, like, its, its complicated relationship to motivation and to demand and to chores um, and to experiences which it has identified as tedious. Because, like, once the ADHD brain identifies a given experience as, like, tedious, as, like, a thing that's, like, that's not exciting, a thing that's not exhilarating in some sense, a thing that's not stimulating, the ADHD brain will not do it, right? Like, you can, you can force it, like, you can, you can summon all of your willpower and you can, like, sit down and grit your fucking teeth and, like, drag your ass through the motherfucking thing. Um, you know, by, by hook and crook and, like, pain and misery, you can make it happen. But you can't do that all the time. You can only do that so much before you burn yourself completely the fuck out. So, like, I just... It was a toxic mix that I've made for myself. Because I didn't know how to emotionally process why my brain is the way that it is, why my brain reacts to work and to chores and to projects the way that it does. Um, and so that ended up just resulting in, like, a one-year hiatus. Which, to be fair, I think that did me good. Like, I, th I think that, that got me out of a stress hole with Elden Ring, where, like, I, because I was away from it for so long, I kind of had time to to feel my way back to it. Like, like, sort of, like, a lot of those negative feelings sort of resolved and went away and processed on their own in the background. So that when I came back to it, right, I could feel the excitement again. 
which I certainly have been. Um, but yeah, like getting the ADHD diagnosis, beginning to read up on how ADHD works, how it influences the way that my brain handles motivation. Um, like the fact that I am permanently, because of ADHD, I am permanently in a dopamine deficit, right? Like I'm, or serotonin, one of them. I'm perfect, permanently in a deficit of certain neurotransmitters that govern attention, right? Like that govern interest. I am permanently understimulated, right? Um, which is one of the, which is one of the really big things. Like, I find that when I sit down to work, it's like half of the time I'm trying to work, I'm standing up, walking around, going to the kitchen to get a snack. Not because I'm hungry, not because I'm even feeling snackish, but just because my brain's like, something has to happen. Like, there has to be, I have to have some kind of stimulation now. Like, a thing, a thing needs to happen that's not, that's not a repetition of a thing that happened two minutes ago, right? Like, I cannot do the same thing X number of times in a row. I need to do a new thing now. I need new stimulation. Jesus Christ, I cannot, like, I, and... It really is the thing of, like, like I used to just feel shame about that. Like, really, just sort of primarily. It's just, oh, that's that's a bad feeling to have. That's a sign of a lack of willpower and moral fiber. That is that is uh, that is weakness in a sense, right? Like that is that is me not having work ethic. Um, and the thing you're supposed to do about not having work ethic is to, like, a good little Protestant. Um, Bury your feelings deep down inside, grit your teeth, and just do the fucking work um, without complaining, you, like, you entitled piece of shit. Because, like, you don't deserve to... Like, th that Protestant work ethic thing, um, this is one of the consequences of growing up in a, in a Christian nation. Um, like, that was the only tool I had to try and deal with, like, okay, I feel absolutely no motivation. I don't seem to be able to whip my brain into paying attention to the thing I want my brain to be paying attention to. Oh well, I guess the thing to do is is call myself a piece of shit and uh and like push harder. Just just keep pushing harder, pushing harder. Like just increase the amount of push that you're doing, increase the amount of stress that it takes for you to finish a task until the task is finished. Um forever. Just 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 escalate that forever and then die, I guess. Like I didn't have another strategy. I didn't have another way to conceptualize why I'm having trouble finishing a task, why I'm having trouble doing something. But then getting the diagnosis and sort of like, no, 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 you have a brain that isn't normal, right? Like, there's a cause for this in there. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a matter of moral fiber. It's not a matter of a personality deficit. It's not a matter of like, um, some kind of laziness. Your brain doesn't work the way that most other brains do. It needs something, like, it needs a different approach to motivation and to, you know, attention management. It needs a different approach to work, right? Um, and once I had that, like, I could stop sort of turning everything inward, right? I could stop turning everything into, this is because I suck, right? Like, this is because there's a deficit in me. This is because there's some kind of crucial flaw or lack in me and then turn it into, okay, there is a different structure and it needs a different process, right, in order to work. And it's not like, I don't I don't have any fucking magic bullet sort of, wow, I, I did this one weird trick and fixed my ADHD kind of thing. No, ADHD still sucks. It's a disability. It disables me from doing certain things. Um... I don't have a magic fix for it or anything. It's not like it's not like the problem has gone away just because I know it's there. Uh, that's not how this works. But the weight of it is a lot easier to take. Right? It's a lot easier emotionally to take it when it's like I sit down, I cannot fucking do a task, right? Like I try, I push and it just my brain just simply refuses to pay attention to the to the thing I'm pointing it at. It simply will not. And so now, instead of my only recourse to that being, well, okay, I guess I'll just feel fucking shitty about that um, and keep pushing even though it doesn't work, 
Now my recourse is, okay, so this is the thing my brain has decided is not going to happen right now. Fine. Is there anything else that needs to get done in the meantime? Like, if, if this thing is closed off, fine. Is there something else I need to get done in the meantime? Like, do I need to clean the apartment? Do I need to take out the trash? Do I need to go get groceries? Do I need to, like, fucking what I feed the cats? Whatever the fuck it is. Is there something else that needs doing instead? And one of the things that happens is when you give yourself permission to abandon a task that your brain doesn't want to do is that you start assessing all the other options that are on the table, all the other things that you need to get done or that could could be done or other things you could be doing right now. And sometimes your brain goes, ah, fuck, I don't want to take out the trash. Fine, I, now I'm motivated to work for some reason all of a sudden, right? Like, it literally can be the th thing of, like, the brain assesses that, oh, the best source of dopamine is actually probably doing the, the creative task in front of you. And then all of a sudden I can work. Like, just the moment I stop trying to push my way through and start assessing. Okay, let's, well, you want to do something else? Let's do something else then. Let's find something else to do. And that's when the brain kind of goes, no, actually, I want to do this thing. Like a cat, almost, right? Like a cat that can't decide whether it wants to go in or out. Um, and again, it's not a magic bullet. It's not a fix. Sometimes there are days when shit just does not get done because the brain has decided that the fucking stars are in the wrong position around Venus in the sky or whatever. Like, for whatever fucking reason, my brain just doesn't want to colla collaborate with me, just does not want to do any of the things that need to get done. And that's when I spend days, like, being a vegetable, essentially. Like, where all I can really do is post on social media, scroll, watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, lie down, um, <laughs> like, do, do nothing. Um, do nothing productive. Like, I, I get stuck in video games a lot. Um, I Legends of Runeterra, Path of Champions, for example. I've been... That, a lot of the time, especially in the recent couple of months, has been my passive dopamine generator. Like, this is... That's a thing... That's a game I can play that has, like, a pretty fast turnaround. I build up, like, it's this roguelike thing with a deck builder. Where it's like it a, it's a pretty solid source of consistent dopamine hits that my brain can really fucking fixate on, um, and that just sort of comforts me and and like and like numbs me um, to the like to the to the shivering understimulation that otherwise dominates my soul. Right, like when like days of chronic understimulation are the fucking worst. Now that I know what that is. Like, days where you're so understimulated that your brain just kind of goes, easiest source of dopamine within within a hand's reach. That's your phone. On the phone. This is the place we're going to be. This is the only thing that you are capable of being interested in. This is the only thing you are now capable of even wanting to do. You are incapable of wanting to do anything else. Oh, you can intellectually decide to do something else if you want to, but you can't want to. You cannot emotionally, physically wish to do anything else. You only wish to scroll on phone. You only wish to receive dopamine hit from new thing, right? And those days are still there. And there's no, I, I don't have, short of fucking medication, there's nothing I, I don't know that can be done to, like, to really deal with that, which is why I'm so fucking desperate to get back on my medication. Hopefully by the end of the month, I will be. Um... But, like, it's so much easier to forgive myself for that now, right? Not in the sense of, like, excusing me, like, oh, well, you have ADHD, therefore you don't have responsibilities, therefore you don't... Like, none of that, right? Like, it's, like, having ADHD doesn't get me out of any of the, th on, uh, any of the responsibilities that I have. It just means if there is a day when I'm disabled, then that is because I have a disability and not because I am ontologically a piece of shit, right? Like, it's not because I'm morally evil, um, it's not because I'm lazy, because if I was, that's the thing, this is a very good quote, if you were lazy, you would be enjoying not doing anything. If you were lazy, you'd be having a good time, right? When you lay around in bed all day and you don't get fuck shit done, you'd be happy. You'd be like, oh my god, this is so nice, this is so cozy, I'm having a good time, I'm doing the things I want to do, I like, fuck work, I am chasing hedonism and bliss. But that's not what happens with ADHD. It's not that I'm 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 laying there going, oh god, it feels so good not to work. It makes me so fucking horny not to work. Ah, like 
that's not what it is. What it is is like, I want to work, 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 I want to, I want to, I want to, God fucking damn it, get out of bed. God damn it, I don't want to be here in bed anymore. Scroll, scroll, scroll on phone, right? That's what it's like. It's stressful. It's stressful as fuck to be ADHD paralyzed because you want emotion, like, it, intellectually, rather, you want to do the things, you want to get the things done because you know that if you leave, like, your fucking laundry another five days, it's gonna start to stink up the place. You know that if you don't do the dishes, you know that if you don't take out the trash, you know that if you don't, you know, work on your fucking videos and maybe respond to that sponsor who's been trying to get in touch with you. There are consequences for that. Negative consequences. Bad consequences sometimes. I have lost so many fucking sponsorships to ADHD inability to answer a fucking email. And it's bad. Because it's, like, it's, it's money that I kind of can't afford to just let go. Um, but it's part of the disability, right? It's, it's this inability to follow up on things in that way. Um, and I'm not... Like, having the diagnosis doesn't absolve me of any of that. That's still bad when I don't do my responsibilities. But it's like... I can stop turning it into... A fixable failure in myself, right? Because this isn't something that can be fixed. ADHD is for life. Like it's it's a neurodivergence. It's it's a difference in the way that the brain is structured. Just as surely as having a chronic vitamin D deficiency, which I also have, as it turns out. Um, a chronic vitamin D deficiency is just a, it's just a thing that's in your body. It's just your body doesn't make the right chemicals in the right proportions, and that has some consequences for the way that you function. Um, like, it's like anemia, right? It's... And so, while I can curse it and I can be frustrated with it, and there are strategies I can use, there are things I can do to fucking get around it, like, to to, to ameliorate it, to work around my condition, um, to sort of appease it in various ways until I can get a result out of it. It's not this thing of like, no, no, there is a reason why this is happening, right? There's a cause for it, which isn't located in the sort of misty recess of my immortal soul, right? Like, this is a, no, this is a, you have a, like a, you have a deficiency, you have a disability in your body, in your brain, in the way that it handles its neurotransmitters that makes you incapable of paying attention to things sometimes. Like, not too stupid or too lazy or too like uh, undisciplined to pay attention but incapable and that's easier to handle emotionally and when when things are easier to handle emotionally turns out that helps with ADHD like it helps a lot with ADHD when I am not on top of trying to grit my teeth and force my way through ADHD paralysis I am not also trying to you know like deal with 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 grief and anger um, and self recrimination and all of that shit. Like it gets gets a lot easier to be a person, and it's a lot less stressful. Like there's a lot less energy that has to be spent on it, and that having more energy leaves more time for implementing coping strategies and you know all of that. Um, so yeah, like the ADHD diagnosis has. It's changed a lot for me. Like, even though I'm not medicated right now, much though I want to be, just knowing it, just being able to access resources about what ADHD is and how it works and things you can do to, to manipulate your brain and shit like that has been a genuine game changer. <laughs> it has genuinely helped me so much. It really has. Um, yeah. And so, that's part of why Elden Ring was able to come back, ultimately. Like, it's it's still... Like, I, I brought it back, what, spring last year? Something like that? Yeah, something like that. Um, can't remember exactly, but I, I brought it back before I got my diagnosis. Um... But the reason why I was able to just slowly, not as fast as I'd like, but slowly keep the ball rolling on it is, is because, like, I was able to prevent that same cycle from forming. That same cycle of, I want to do this, but I ought to do that, leading into paralysis. Um, 
I was able to stop that from that spiral from happening because I was able to sort of reframe and, and like rethink how I approached these things emotionally. So Elden Ring hasn't become associated with all of this misery for me. It's it's now it's a fun creative project that I'm excited to do whenever I can get around to it. Rather than, you know, a, a, a trying difficulty that needs to be overcome out of obligation. And that's a good, nice thing. Um, it also doesn't hurt that, like, the Shorts channel has been doing good um, and has been bringing in extra revenue. Like, that has allowed me, like, certainly, like, the success of the Shorts channel, which is, like, past 530,000 subscribers at this point. It's not, like, it, a 530,000 subs uh, subscriber Shorts channel, like, it's, even with, with, like, 10, 11 million views a month, it doesn't bring in that much money. Like, not nearly as much as you would expect f with view counts like that. But it does subsidize. Like, it does take a lot of the pressure off of the main channel to be my only source of revenue, right? Um, along with Patreon. Um, I've even beginning, like, 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 from from people who are like members of the Let's Play channel and and like and now even the fucking reaction channel, which I did not think was ever gonna make any money. Um Like that has that's sort of like other sources of revenue has been subsidizing the main channel. So that I could afford to go slower there, so I could afford not to chase sponsors, so I could afford to you know, disengage from League of Legends a bunch, which I have been doing. Like, I, I really have been... <sighs> I have had the temptation to do What's the Deal videos for new champions, right? Like, I've, I've had the temptation to do a What's the Deal video for Melio, in, in part just to frame the criticism of how poorly Riot are handling uh, champion rollouts recently, like, with, with all the fucking chaos in the lore department and their one rune Terra project and all that shit, like, Melio got shafted, Rel got shafted on release. Um, a bunch of champions have just kind of gotten shoved into the game with barely any lore, like, Nefiri, fucking Nefiri's so cool, but telling a story about her, Raya doesn't give a shit, like, they demonstrably doesn't care, the writers do, as usual, but... Riot Games, the company, doesn't care. Does not give a shit. It's not it. It's not a priority. It's not important to them to do that at all. Um, and I've, I have wanted to frame those criticisms. I have wanted to do that. Like, a what's the deal video about these new champions is, like, a, a good format to do that. But I have also, like... I've also held off because I kind of want to train the algorithm not to expect my channel to be a League of Legends channel exclusively, right? Um... And that's a big hit in, in, like, views and revenue and subscribers counts. Like, subscriber growth, rather. Um, to not do the What's the Deal videos anymore. Because they are, like... They, they are... They, they have been a bedrock of my channel for a long time. And so to, to scale back on those has been scary. To do that. Um, but I, I really do want to unhitch my wagon from League of Legends as, like, a main subject. Because... Yeah, because, like, I just don't want to be tied at the hip to Riot, <laughs> you know? Like, that, that fucking company. Um, and the way it treats its workers and, like, all the problems that it has. I just don't want to be tied at the hip to that. Especially since, like, with how much they've been fucking the lore, which has always been my main entry point into League of Legends, with how much they've been fucking the lore, with how much they've been, been like, screwing the pooch and that, all the fucking people they fired, 500 fucking people. Um... It's like, do I want to be tied? Like, do I want to be stuck to that? Um, in the future, as a channel, as a YouTuber, like, do I want to be stuck to that? And like, like, have to take penalties for doing anything other than talk about it? And like, and if they keep fucking up, am I just going to have to make negative video after negative video after negative video after negative video and kind of, you know, prove the haters right that all I do is complain? 
because all I would have is shit to complain about. It's like... That, that vision of the future fills me with sadness. I would much rather broaden out. I would much rather diversify. I would much rather do more Souls content. I would much rather do animation uh, content and, like, yeah, find, uh, like, do art content, like, stuff about art, stuff about comics, One Piece. I've been really fucking getting back into One Piece. Um, like, that, that video about grief in art is... I, I was really fucking proud of the script on that one, how that came out. Um... And my analyses of art that I that I, like that was that was good shit. And like the Taylor Swift video, yeah, it was sort of a April first joke because it's a video nobody would be expecting me to make ever, right? So it reads as a joke, but the joke is that it's not a joke. It's a completely serious video about a song that I actually care about. Um, but I might want to branch into like music analysis, like well, maybe not music analysis. I don't have a degree in any kind of music theory, but like song lyric analysis, like like that kind of thing um, might want to be a thing I, I like and and a thing I have in my tool belt right like a thing that I can do on my channel and people expect me to do it um, and that's a long process like because my channel was built up so much on League of Legends right that means that as I branch out into other subjects first of all there's going to be subscriber loss right like a bunch of people will, will unsubscribe from it when I'm not no longer making the videos that they want to see which is good like that's what they're supposed to do but what's worse is it means I'm going to have more and more inactive subscribers right there's 270,000 subscribers on the channel right now a certain proportion of those are already dead accounts right like they're dead accounts they're bot accounts they are like fucking whatever they're accounts where someone lost their password do it like who knows they are inactive for one reason or another. They do not provide my channel with any actual engagement. So my effective subscriber count... Oop, killed myself there. Hot! Hello. Ow. Um, my effective subscriber count is something less than 270,000, right? Like, it's... And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, if it's like, 160,000 or if it's, like, 90,000 or, like... I, I don't know what my effective subscriber count is, which is, like, people who are subscribed and active, listening, interested subscribers will click on the videos that I post. Um, and that proportion can be really fucking low on a lot of channels. Like, you will see channels out there that have, like, millions of subscribers, but whose effective subscriber count, like, they will post videos that never crack 100,000, right? Because the effective subscriber count, like, the actual active subscriber count, the, the number of people subscribed to it that give a shit about the channel and click on it who aren't just subscribed for nostalgia um, or out of obligation or because their channel, is, their account is dead or whatever, is... Like, could be as low as, like, 100,000, right? Like, it could be as low as 100,000 actual active subscribers, even with a million subscribers. Um, and so as I switch over to talking about other subjects, that's going to be more and more and more for me. Like, that, that ratio is going to go up quite steeply. Um, I'm going to have a much larger part of my subscriber base who are inactive subscribers, right? Um who maybe stick around, like, who who don't unsubscribe, and maybe in part because, like, well, maybe he'll post another League of Legends video someday, or maybe he'll post about... I, I like his videos, I just don't care about the subjects that he's making videos about. Maybe he'll make a video about a subject I care about someday. Like, all of that shit. Um, and that's gonna cost me so much in the algorithm. Because, like, the algorithm sees that, sees that a d large proportion of your subscribers don't care about your videos anymore. Well, that must mean that they're low-quality videos. I'm not gonna serve them to a broader audience either, right? And that's... And that can be a death spiral for a YouTube channel. Like that can that can that can kill a YouTube channel beyond the point where it can function anymore. Um, which is part of the reason why I have Two B Skyne and Three B Skyne and, and TV Skyne Shorts is essentially as fucking backups, right? And also as things I can use eventually um, to drive traffic back to the main channel. Right, like to like even if 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 the algorithm won't serve my videos to a lot of people, I can at least promote my video, like make some shorts about the same subject over on the shorts channel and direct people to go find my long form videos and like get those small boosts that way, right? Those small hits of engagement that'll that'll keep my channel alive, right? Um, and like I don't know, like three D Sky was never supposed to be anything other than just like a hangout and shit post channel, just. 
Um, but now it has like 16,000 subscribers, so I guess I guess it's now a useful tool. Um, and it's monetized. So I guess it's now a useful tool. Like, it's, it's another little thing I have in my back pocket. Um, along with my Twitch stream, right? Like, the Twitch stream is also a thing that I... I keep meaning to sink more time into developing. As a thing, especially in my Final Fantasy XIV streams. Um... I keep having plans to develop that more, again, as a backup, right? As a thing to take the pressure off the main channel so that even if its effective subscriber count plummets, even if its engagement sort of tanks a bit, uh, I will have other avenues, first of all, to generate revenue, right? Because I, I need to make my fucking rent. It's, it's a little bit important. I don't have savings, right? Um, even at this point with the channels I have, like, savings is just not really something I've got a lot of. Um, I still feel... I, I'm not nearly as precarious as I have been in life, but it's still not, you know... I'm not sitting on YouTube millions here, right? Like, uh... So, like, I've, I've been... I've just been working on contingencies of trying to... As I want to disentangle myself from League of Legends more and more, sort of, I've been doing contingency plans to sort of, okay, like, what can I do to get around that, right? Like, what can I do to avoid the pitfalls that come with that? And that's been working okay. Like, that's, 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 that's been, like, again, 3 Beast Guy is a channel that, like, I don't, what the fuck happened there? I don't know how the hell that happened. Um... Which is in part, sort of, 3 Beast Guy is in part a little bit returning to my roots. Like, I started out as functionally kind of a reaction channel. Um... Like, in, in the sense that I made videos by loading up a bunch of web pages with content on them. Like, like here's the champion bio, here's the, here's the splash art, here's the whatever. And then I would just kind of talk off the cuff. Maybe I have a few notes, but i just kind of talk extemporaneously um, off the cuff. I'd do, like, multiple recordings of things and, like, minimal editing. Um, and that was how I got, like, my first, like, 10, 15,000 subscribers was doing that. And then as I got more subscribers, was, I was I became more and more like, I feel like this is kind of low quality, and I also got frustrated with, like, oh, shit, I had this good take going, but then I ruined it by, like, going off on a tangent that didn't make any fucking sense, and now I kind of have to redo a bunch of shit. It was inefficient as well. Um, but it did mean, like, I, back then I could put out a video a week. Easily. Multiple videos a week. Because, you know, no editing. I was just kind of talking on the fly. Um... And that's good for growth. And with 3B's guy, I can kind of do the same thing. Like, I just recorded a video about some fucking dumb news article I saw uh, that I just kind of wanted to comment on because, it, like, there's some interesting things about it. They ended up going off on an unhinged rant about a water can company, um, and the commodification of, of, like, clean water and the inevitable water wars that will wipe out half the world and institute fallout in real life. Um... Uh, that's not a real prediction, but, you know, it's it's an, it's, it's an emotional feeling. Um, and I can just kind of do that over there. I could not do that on my main channel. <laughs> That's not really... Again, algorithm doesn't really know what the fuck to do with that. Um, but I can do it on that channel. And that's sort of... That's a nice... It's ADHD friendly again. That's the other thing about... That's the Again, going back to the ADHD, that's the other reason I started 3B Sky and is like... I felt like I needed some kind of ADHD friendly content creation outlet. Right, shorts kind of filled that role for a while because, like a short, I can write, record, and edit a short in like an hour when I'm on fire. Like when when I'm really on, when when the juices are flowing, I can do that in an hour, right? Like and that's a really quick turnaround. That feels nice for the ADHD brain. Like that's that mm, you you can really sink your your teeth into that. You can sort of get into a hyper focused flow and like make twelve, fifteen. Like I think I made twenty shorts in one day at one point. Um, you can really get into that. Like, that's been good. Um, but it also, like... It also does demand, like, a process. And, like, it demands, like, review. And, like, you need to write and rewrite the script sometimes. And as I've gotten more and more subscribers on that channel, I've also been become more and more careful about, like, like... Minding what I say. Because, like, a lot of people will hear, like, this 60-second short. Um... And they'll come up with a million fucking objections about, well, you didn't mention this, you didn't mention that, you didn't mention the third thing, you didn't mention these other 1,405 billion other things. 
um, about the subject, which is like, yeah, no, you try doing that in 60 seconds, motherfucker. Um, but like, there are definitely, there have been definitely things in my scripting that has been, that has like led to those kinds of comments because I just didn't speak with enough clarity. I didn't speak with enough like, like the like clarity about how to understand the the shorts themselves. Like I didn't speak with enough um, conciseness and and structure to sort of head some of those comments off at the pass. Um, and so I've also been, I've also as the channel has grown, as I've also instituted like more of a process, more of an editing process, more of a scripting process for that. And that has slowed it all down. And slowing it down makes it bad for the ADHD brain. So, 3B's guy, where I just fucking put on some web pages on screen, and I just talk, and I just do commentary, and I just go off the cuff, and I just, I don't have to worry about so many fucking things. I can just react to some fucking anime or whatever. Um, just as an outlet for that nervous energy and that need to be stimulated. And that's been good. Like, that, that really has been good. And it's been very gratifying that it's also, like, again... It's not making a ton of money. It's not, like, it's not paying the rent or nothing. Um, but, like, it, it is a, a channel where I can see, like, because I can upload fairly frequently, because I can upload fairly regularly, and, I can, like, that's the thing that's like, okay, there's some growth potential there. Like, that, that, that could become a nice little side revenue source without, like, without having to take the same level of work and dedication as the longer projects over on my main channel do. Um, yeah, so, so that's been nice. And again, like, it's that fucking ADHD diagnosis that's changing everything about how I manage my life. Everything about how I manage my life. Everything about how I think about my life and how I think about approaching tasks and shit like that. It's like, even if you don't get medicated, even if you don't need medication, even if, 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 you know, even if it doesn't really change anything materially about your world. Getting a diagnosis can be fucking helpful, man. Psychologically, if nothing else. I'm really pleased with the character design of my avatar right now, by the way. Um, I kind of like, like, the, the fucking crow feather cloak straight out of Bloodborne, I was so happy to find that. Then with, like, a hood on, and my fucking eye patch, and a big chunk of steel. <laughs> That's that. I'm, I'm, I'm really genuinely quite happy with this. I kind of want to go get a katana. Like, I do, I think I do want to respec at least once with Renala and respec into, because I want to do Tides of Blood, right? Like you got to do Tides of Blood at some point. Like, you got to do some of the fucking spell katanas with the big flashy fucked up arts of war things oh rivers of blood whatever it's called um like at some point you gotta do that right you gotta do that you gotta you have to you have to do that at some point okay 32 vigor and then the scar seal takes me up to 37 Yeah, that'll do for health for now, I think. That'll, 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 that'll probably let me at least attempt to take on Radon at some point. Now, Faith. Time to do Faith. So I can do a few more things with that, maybe. Um, the fuck else was I talking about? I had something in mind that I wanted to talk about much, much earlier, long before the, all the ADHD ranting, but that's that's been kind of knocked out of my head. At this point, I don't fucking know. It's also almost midnight at this point, so we should probably think about going to bed. Oh, right! Uh, fucking sleep apnea. So I've had sleep apnea 15 years at this point, something like that. That's at least, that's at least like, when I, people in my life started mentioning, hey, you snore, like, real kind of bad. Like, to the point that sometimes it sounds like you stop breathing. Um, which I was just like, yeah, fuck it, like, whatever. Like, I snore, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's not really a big deal, is it? Um, 
So I kind of ignored that for 15 years. Um, but again, in conjunction with the fucking ADHD diagnosis, like one of the things that's, that's been preventing me from getting on medication is my blood pressure has been too high. Um, which is now being medicated also. I'm taking so many fucking more pills now than I ever have at any point in my life. Um, but that's being medicated, which is good because high blood pressure will kill you in the end. Uh, that's like, that's how you get a fucking uh, blood clot in the brain. And I, that terrifies me, so I'm glad that my blood pressure is under control now. But one of the things I wanted to do to get my blood pressure under control is like, oh, like, what can I do that's not pills, right, to get my blood pressure under control? Exercise, better diet, all of that, yes, absolutely, but also, sleep apnea spikes your blood pressure pretty badly over time. Um, so I got diagnosed with that, officially, like a doctor stuck a tube up my nose with a little camera on it, checked around for... I guess they were checking for polyps or whatever, like to check and see if there was any kind of like obstruction in there that needed to be like surgeried out of me, if that was the cause. And then they gave me a little device home that had like a little thing that that like a little, a pair of little little nose things that went like just into the the entrance of your nose and measured the air that came out. And like it was a little monitor that you wear on your chest that sort of keeps track of your heart rate and a little oxy blood oxygen monitor thing that I put on my finger and I slept with that for a night and they sort of monitored what my breathing was like, what my blood oxygen was like and the, that came back as like okay, yeah, you, you have what's called I don't know how it's categorized in other countries um, in our health system it's like there's three stages of sleep apnea. There's mild sleep apnea which is like, yeah, you have a bit of it but it's not it doesn't need treatment, like nothing really needs to be done about it. Then there's moderate which is like, it's not terrible but something does need to be done about it and then there's like high severe sleep apnea which is like no, you need treatment right the fuck now um, I am in the very mild end of the moderate sleep apnea, right? Um, so it's not... My my blood oxygen is f mostly fine. It's like, it's it, I'm sort of on the edge case where sometimes they wouldn't... Like, if I didn't want treatment, my doctor would probably be like, okay, like, I'm not, I'm not going to push it too far with you because, like, it's not that bad. But I wanted treatment. So now I have one of those little fancy CPAP machine things, which is a little nose mask I put on over my head at night that just, just just blows air into my face. And I do mean like not not on my face but into like into my nostrils keeps my throat open at night so that it doesn't collapse like so that the 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 soft palate doesn't collapse the windpipe and I breathe at night. And I wasn't expecting much effect from that cuz like I said like my I like, I was told by the doctor, yeah, you have pretty mild sleep apnea. It's like, it's not, a, it's not a huge deal. And I've never really felt, like, as though I, I... Like, the symptoms of sleep apnea are, like, like fatigue and, like, brain fog and, like, sort of difficulty concentrating. I was like, I have difficulty concentrating for other reasons. Like, what the fuck? This has nothing to do with sleep. Um, but no, no, that actually, that's also uh, <laughs> another piece of advice. If you, if, you, if you snore a lot, maybe get checked out for apnea. And if you do have apnea... Maybe get a machine for that. Like, maybe get some kind of treatment for that, because... Jesus fucking Christ, did you, did you know? I, you people have been sleeping like that for free? You just have been breathing like that at night for free? The whole time? And you just wake up and you feel okay? I thought... Because, again, it's that thing of, of, like, not knowing that something's wrong with you. You just think whatever... What, however you feel is normal. Like, I... I wake up in the morning used to, and it's like... Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, it's another day. Okay, fine, fuck it. Okay, I'll get up. Oh, sorry. Like, like, exhausted, kind of like, oh, fuck. I just scroll my phone for like 20 minutes, like, watch. Like, waiting for my brain to sort of catch up with the fact that I'm awake. Like, wait, waiting for me to be conscious that I'm awake. Like, it's, it, like, I had this, like, two hour startup sequence, at least in my day, where it's like, just like, okay, just fucking drink some, eat some breakfast, maybe have a sip of energy drink or whatever, wait for that to kick in, and then eventually my brain would wake up and I'd be like, okay, now I can start my day and start figuring out what work to do and shit like that. With the machine, now that I'm sort of used to it, it's more like I wake up in the morning and it's like, oh, I'm awake now. I'm, I'm, a, I'm awake. And it's not like I'm jumping out of bed like, oh my god, I am so happy, I'm excited to meet the day. Like, it's not it hasn't turned me into a morning person. It's just I wake up and I'm awake rather than I wake up and then 
I am a sort of half awake zombie for th two hours until like my brain sort of comes to term with the fact that it can't be asleep anymore. I'm just awake. And there isn't like an I I still scroll on my phone in bed, but now it's cause like uh fuck I don't wanna I don't wanna get up right now rather than I am not conscious or present enough to engage in any kind of activity that requires me to be, you know, present beyond lying on my phone staring at the ceiling. Um And that's and also I don't need to take naps in the middle of the day anymore. That was a thing that used to happen to me a lot where like I'd get up, I'd sort of I'd do my morning rituals, I'd, I'd, get, I'd go through the process, I'd do the rigmarole, the startup sequence, I'd get my brain sort of working, um, and feel like I had woken up, as it were, and then, like, lunchtime, I eat my lunch, and then my body just kind of goes, you need a nap now, old man, like, to bed, and it's not necessarily that I would sleep, but, like, I would need to lie on the couch and just kind of, like, day doze or sort of be half asleep cat napping for like an hour or two and then I could get back up and then I could do some more things um and on really on bad days like have two naps you know uh like or just have a nap that was so unsatisfying I just feel kind of tired and sluggish the rest of the day that doesn't happen so much anymore like I can still get tired I can still have a nap um absolutely but I'm just, I'm just awake. <laughs> like, when I'm awake, I'm awake. And that's fucked up, man. Is that how everyone else been doing it? Like, the whole time? Like, I, like... I think memes, in part, sort of have fucked me up on that front. Because, like, I thought that waking up in the morning and just being like, Oh my god, where am I? Who am I? Where? Like, being so fucking tired. I thought that was just normal. Like, I thought that's just how everyone wakes up under modern capitalism. Like, I thought I thought we were all just kind of exhausted and tired and and and, and fucked out of our minds. Um, and that was just the modern condition. But no, it turns out, like, when you have a fucking cushy YouTuber job where you don't work, like, two jobs in an Amazon warehouse in order to make half of your rent in some horrifying, gentrified landlord hellscape in the US, like, where where there is no minimum wage, and, like, like, when you lead a life that is as relatively free of physical struggle as mine is, because I am very, very lucky. No, actually, you, when you have slept for eight hours, you're supposed to wake up and feel, like, <laughs> moderately rested by it. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I, I guess, I guess I could have felt like that throughout university. I got really, I am feeling like, fuck, I could have done so much more at university. Like, it's like, I did six years of university and I was fucking tired for all of it. And you're telling me I could have had, like, a little machine on the fucking nose mask? And I could have, like, been awake for most of that? Like, I, I, I had so many fucking lectures where it's like, again, disentangling how much is the ADHD causing problems and how much is my, my sleep deprivation. But I... I had lectures that were literally I was falling asleep during the lecture, and I thought it was because I just found them boring, right? I thought it was because I just wasn't interested in the subject, or... Like, hadn't had enough sleep that night, or whatever. And it might genuinely have been because I just wasn't getting... proper sleep at all. <laughs> that I ended up, like, sitting with, like taking naps during lectures um, and missing out on a bunch of stuff. Like, I, I, my bachelor's project could have been a lot better. First of all, if I'd had my ADHD diagnosis and I'd had a fucking work process to, to, sort, of, to sort of get around that and function, um, that, would, that would have helped a bit. Um, but also, if I'd just been able to be awake more time of the day to work on it, it that, that could have turned out real, real much better. Okay, I think I want to get Faith to 17, which means we'll need at least 36,000 runes and probably a bit more than that. So let's do that. It's a boring way to grind, but it's safe, and it's mindless, and I can just kind of do it on autopilot.
while talking to you guys about other stuff or listening to a podcast, which is what I usually would have been doing. I kind of considered almost like putting on an episode of like Behind the Bastards or Trash Future or whatever and just like recording me sitting here listening to it. But I would feel bad about like like just re-uploading a podcast episode like that <laughs> from from like a podcast that I like. Um, I'd, I'd feel bad about that. Like I wonder if that's like... I can't imagine that they would be super okay with it. Right? Because I have been considering, like, oh, could I do a reaction video on 3B Sky into a podcast? Like, is, is that a thing that's reasonable to do? Because, like, it's, like, it's sort of similar to me, too. I've done commentary videos on other people's YouTube videos before, right? And I've just, like, I did not... I don't want to monetize those. I Like, even the... Like, the Nicky Boy... Cassiopeia rework video. I did a full commentary on that. And even though, like, it, that ended up getting a fuckload of views, like, more views than a lot of my main channel videos. Um, even though I could have just, like, enabled ads and sent the fucking money to Nicky Boy, right? Like, who was out a bunch of cash after that video got fucked over. I just, I have an ethical, I have, like, an ethical qualm. I have a moral objection in my heart to monetizing a commentary that's just, like, fully playing someone else's video. Like, I'm just not comfortable doing it. Like, even even if it would, even if it's like, oh yeah, take the ad revenue, give it to the other person, like, even that, I'm... I don't, I, I just, it just doesn't feel right, right? And because the channel is supposed to be my fuck around and do whatever the fuck I want channel, I don't want to do stuff on there that doesn't make me feel good. Like, that makes me feel conflicted or have to deal with difficult emotions and shit like that. I just don't want to. Right? And... I don't know, like, uploading a, a reaction to a whole-ass episode of someone else's podcast is like... Yeah, I mean, I would need to be able to do commentary on it. Like, that's the thing is, like, when I listen to, like, Well, There's Your Problem or Behind the Bastards or Trash Future or or Kill James Bond or whatever, um, I'm mostly a passive listener, right? Like, I have the thing that everyone has, which is, like, you have these imaginary conversations in your head of, like, this is what I would say if I was sitting there with my friends who I know so well... And I know all their in jokes, and I know all their and I know all their dynamics. And this is this is the joke that I would tell. This is where I'd say, ah, this cool thing. And then we'd all laugh, and they'd all be my pals. Like the parasociality of podcast is real fucking strong. Um, but with that, like, do I want to fucking make a reaction video out of that? I don't think I do. Um, the only thing I've I've sort of had for an idea for that was like the Kill James Bond podcast is probably my favorite movie podcast I've ever listened to. Like it, they are so fucking good. November and 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 uh, Abigail and Devon, like they are just they're just so fucking good at at razzing those fucking movies. Um, but it also has always had the weakness of like, okay, like, ah, <laughs> uh, you kind of have to watch the movie to get all the jokes. Like they do a real good job of like making the episodes entertaining, even though you don't know, you don't see the movie playing on screen. The idea that I've had in my head is like, I already do these reaction videos. Right, like two episodes of anime or whatever. Could I do a reaction video to like a whole movie? And then also the Kill James Bond episode about the movie at the same time? Because that to me feels like that would be reasonably transformative, right? That it's like, I, I and I don't know what the fuck the format would be, like how that would work. Is it a thing of, like, I watch the movie as a reaction thing first and react to the movie and then do it again, but with Kill James Bond where I sort of, like, go off of their bits and sort of try to add my own commentary? Like, I don't know if the thing I'm describing is remotely feasibly possible, much less whether it would be a good time. <laughs> Would anyone want to listen to that? Like, would that would that be a, a remotely approachable viewing experience? I have no idea. 
but I've been playing with it in my head, and, like, it feels like that would be, like, transformative, right? Like, under the principles of fair use, and also just, like, under the principles of, like, like creative ethics, that I'm not just stealing their podcast episode and putting it on my channel for engagement, but, like, that I'm using it as a, as, as a, as a piece of building something that is, like, its own thing. Um... I don't know. Like, I've been wanting to do something like that. Like, like where it's like, I had the same idea about, like, there's a podcast I listen to, Well, There's Your Problem, which is all about engineering disasters, right? Like, it's about, like, like big infrastructure going the fuck wrong or, like, crazy construction projects or, like, industrial disasters, that kind of thing. Where I've always thought that it might be interesting to, like, pick an episode with a really interesting disaster try and do a bunch of my own research about it and then like okay could I do a reaction slash commentary track on a well there's your problem episode where I add something to the conversation meaningfully like where where where, where I contribute something to the thing Like, add some kind of context or something that, that would be useful to people. And I've not really, like, because I'm not, I don't know enough about engineering that I think that I would ever be able to do that. Um, so it's that thing of, like, okay, maybe I could cover an angle that, that, that they didn't cover in the episode. Like, maybe I could talk about how was it covered in the media at that point. Like, but that sort of gets, like, everything I think about there sort of gets away from the idea of it being a reaction to the podcast episode, right? Um... Where I kept thinking about, okay, I could, I could I could add additional context. I could talk about like how it was perceived in media. I could talk about like the, you know, fucking whatever. Like, but that didn't really fit the reaction channel. Because like the thing with the reaction channel is mostly I just want to use the reaction channel as a way to get some content out of my passive consumption, which I do a lot of. And that's another thing about the ADHD brain, like I talked about, right? Like the, the passive scrolling thing, like the paralysis. Um, 3B Scan has sort of been a way to take a little bit of control over those paralyses by going, okay, like my brain is currently only capable of sitting down and passively consuming a show and like, and like thinking about it and then obsessing over it and caring about it. Okay. So then, fine, let's put that anime episode on and then turn on a microphone and then have me talk about how I'm feeling and thinking about the thing when I'm watching it. Because, like, my brain never turns off the analysis machine. Um, like, that's constant. Um, and so, like, okay, might as well, like, find a way to, 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 to get that out of my head so that I'm not... Because, like, I will... Like, the way that I watch watch things over on 3B's Guide is not distinct. <laughs> Particularly from the way that I watch, um, watch things on my own. Like, on my own, usually I won't say things out loud. Like, I won't get up and, like, go around, like, doing lectures about, oh, shit, what the fuck is that? Like, ah, like, freak out about the way that a rock is animated in Freerun or whatever. Um, out loud, but I'll do it in my head. Right? Like, I'll I'll have these conversations with myself in my head. Um, and so, like, okay, might as well say them out loud then. Like, get something out of your paralysis. Get something out of being a passive consumer of things. And yeah, so that so that extends to podcasts, right? Like that extends to like I I do spend a lot of time where otherwise I just kind of play Etrian Odyssey. I've really gotten back into Etrian Odyssey games uh, recently, which is like some of the best fucking dungeon crawlers. Just like if you want just like classic dungeon crawler RPG with like a, some challenging combat systems and things like that, Etrian Odyssey. I cannot recommend those games highly enough. Um, all of them. There's there's a bunch. There's a fuck ton of them. Um, Etrian Odyssey Untold, if you want, like, easy beginner games that sort of, like, ease you into how those games work, and something like Etrian Odyssey Nexus, if you want, like, to have a real fucking challenge on your hands. Um, like, a real grindy challenge, too. Like, one where you really have to 
get into it. Like, because that, to me, has been a huge dopamine generator. Like, massive dopamine generator. Um, oh, well, wrath. <laughs> I mean, I say massive dopamine generator. It's, like, not enough. Not enough to satisfy me. Not enough to satiate my brain and make me go, ah, oh, my God. I, my, my need for stimulation has been filled. But... But, like, just, like, a thing that I've spent a fuck ton of time being stuck to and stuck on. Um. Maybe I should do an Etrian Odyssey Let's Play at some point. I don't know. Um. So, yeah, like, I, and I, I'll do that, Etrian Odyssey. I'll grind through that. I'll grind through uh, Legends of Runeterra while listening to podcasts, usually. Um, and I, it'd be nice if there was some way to, you know, make content <laughs> instead of just being completely stuck in passive consumption. Um, and I don't say that from a perspective of, like, oh, grind set, gotta be on your grind set, gotta monetize everything. Um... I say that from a perspective of, like, feeling less like I'm wasting my time. Like, feeling like my time is, 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 is not just being taken away from me by my brain, but that I'm doing something. I'm taking some kind of action of some kind um, to reclaim agency and, like, make my behavior work for me in some way or another. Okay, so, what, 60,000 runes to get up to 17 faith? Something like that, I think. Which means 30 trips back and forth, more or less. I should actually, do I have any... I don't seem to have any, I think I used all of them then. All of my consumable runes. I do have the Remembrance of the Full Moon Queen. Which, you know, I'm not really playing a sorcerer here. But I don't want to use it. Um, it's more a thing of, like, trying to take control back. Like, trying to make... Okay, I am going to be passively sitting here and just consuming content and, and, like, letting it be my source of dopamine since my brain can't make it properly on its own. Fine. Um, but then I'm taking back control and I'm, I'm making something out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm making something out of it. That it's not just me being a vegetable. I'm, like, I have agency in this. That's sort of more where I'm coming from with that. <sighs> I am getting kind of tired now. But hey, I, I managed to talk throughout this entire fucking hour, nonetheless. It's... <laughs> I mean, that's another thing about the ADHD, is, like, it does give me some powers. Like, it does... It has a lot of downsides, it has a lot of problems, but there are a few superpowers that I like. One of my superpowers is my ability to just sit down and fucking go. Talk. Like, keep a thing rolling. Keep a conversation going. Oh. Um, Provide commentary, like do stream of consciousness. Jump from one subject to another and have something interesting to say about them. Like that's, those those, those are some of the qualities that ADHD has kind of enabled in me, um, which have served me real fucking well as a content creator. Let me fucking tell ya. Um, because it's also like, it, it also gives me a lot of practice speaking. Um, pra and also practice voicing my thoughts, putting my thoughts into into something tangible. Which is not an easy thing to do. Like, that's not something you're born knowing automatically how to do. People 
occasionally sort of ask me like, how do you do your criticism? Like, how do you how do you look at these things and analyze them and, and find these? Like, do you have do, have you read any books? Have you had any training? It's like, I mean, the training is doing it. The training is you sit down and you do it, right? And like you, and a good starting point is to listen to someone else talk about a thing and, and like critically analyze it, and then go, okay. I agree with this or I disagree with that and here's the reason why and like like sort of try and, and copy the process by which they came up with their arguments in order to and then reframe it in order to make your own arguments is a good way to is a good way to do it but it's just practice like it is just I have practiced my brain for years and years at this point to form opinions to look for patterns to to to, to try and comprehend and understand and analyze and see connections in the media that I enjoy, right? And, like, doing six years of university has certainly helped with that. Like, like doing an English degree has certainly helped with that. Like, like that gave me a lot of the formal tools. Um, like, much though I don't remember many parts of my degree that well anymore, um, has certainly introduced me to a lot of the formal tools that have been useful for me um, in doing this. But it's like, there's no magic, right? There's nothing really special about me. There really isn't, and I don't say that as a, as a, as a form of self-denigration, just as a recognition that, like, like, human beings have the capacity to do what I do, right? Like, broadly speaking, if you are, if you are a person, you can do what I do, maybe not at the same level, maybe not to the same extent, maybe not professionally, like, because I do put more practice into this than most people have time to do in their lives. But there's nothing special about the way that I analyze media, there's nothing special about the way that I think about stories or character design. Like, it, it, there's no magic here. I'm not a special kind of person in any way, shape, or form. This is something anyone can do. It's just practice. You have to practice having opinions. You have to practice forming opinions. You have to practice expressing opinions. You have to practice, like, like, reading media. Not just taking it in or experiencing it, but, like, trying to read it. Right? Like, looking at every part of it and going, okay, is there meaning there? Is there something there that means something, right? Like, for example, rock textures on the sides of the wall here. Probably not a lot of meaning inherent to, like, I probably shouldn't worry about where each individual paint splotch was painted onto this by the texture artist. I probably, that's not, probably not that meaningful in and of itself, but rock texture generally as part of the game's aesthetic, right? As part of, like, we have these yellow trees, which at once look golden and kind of glorious, but also autumn-like and kind of, and kind of like they may be withering a little bit, because, like, they're not green anymore, certainly, and the biggest tree in the world is looking real fucking yellow, like all of its, like, all of its leaves are kind of withering a little bit, and, oh, okay, and, like, having these sparse stark, rocky landscapes, that does do something for the emotional landscape of the game, right? Like, in the same way that that um in Breath of the Wild, right? Like, these rolling, open, green, luscious hills everywhere. That means something for the emotional context of that video game. That means something for what it feels like to play Breath of the Wild, what it feels like to be in Breath of the Wild's world. It means something about, like, how you're supposed to relate to the world as a player. Well, that some of that comes across in the way that that its nature is constructed. So, what kind of nature do we have here, right? Like, what... Not that the textures themselves on the rocks necessarily mean anything, but the color palettes that are chosen for these textures, like, the roughness with which they're painted, like, things like that, can add up to something, right? The decision to have, like, tree roots just absolutely everywhere in this world. Roots, 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 roots. In every part of the lands between. Well, okay, that's the influence of the earth tree reaching out everywhere. So you have these sparse, dead rock cliff surfaces with roots sticking out of them, and that's like, oh, that's almost like a sense of, like, walking in the valleys. Like, you know, in the forest when you see, like, the way that, like, root networks of trees sometimes get exposed by, like, flooding or water or just, like, aging in time, it just sort of feels like being tiny, a tiny little mouse climbing among the roots, the exposed roots of a great tree that is so much impossibly larger than you are. Um, so maybe that is something, like, that's how I do it, right? Like, it's... 
It's about making those connections, right? Like, because, like, no, there is nothing special in particular about the rock texture itself, but the places that I could go from the rock texture, which is like, oh, okay, like, the depiction of nature, the aesthetics of the world, the, like, oh, okay, there's the tree roots, like, the, the way that you're supposed to feel about the natural world of Elden Ring. You can jump from that starting point of, like, is there anything in the rock texture? No, probably not, but that makes me think of... That reminds me of, like, that That makes me consider this angle, that makes me do such and such and so and so. Um, and that's how I do it, and that's, you You practice doing that. You pick an object, you pick an element, you examine it, and you go, is there anything here? And if you say no, okay, why is there nothing here? Like, why does the rock texture mean nothing? And that, the, the, that interrogation of why doesn't mean anything shouldn't just be, well, because it doesn't, because the, like, the curtains are just blue. The rock texture just looks like that because that's what rock looks like. The end. Because rock doesn't look like that. Rock doesn't look like that. Go out into the world. Find a fucking sheer cliff face and tell me that it looks like that. It doesn't. Um, it looks like that because the artist painted it that way. Right? Like, there is an act of creation happening here. Um, so, like, just saying it looks like that because that's what rock looks like, that's not sufficient. Like... You have to come up with something better than just, just cause, right? Like, it looks like that just because. Just because of whatever. Because what, what else are they going to do? Um, that's a good question, though. Like, what else are they going to do? Good question. What else could they do? Like, rather than have these particular rock textures, what could they have done? What could have replaced it? Right? Rather than sheer, gray, flat, sort of rough-hewn rock textures, what else could they have done with the walls in this area? Well, they could have made them into green hills, right? Like, rolling with grass. They could have done that, but that wouldn't have been right, would it? That wouldn't have felt right for this game to have, like, rich, green, rolling hills of grass here. No, that 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 couldn't really be the thing. It kind of has to be these sheer broken up rocks with tree roots poking all throughout them because that's kind of bleak that's kind of grim and harsh and hard and unforgiving and a little violent right like it, these these rocky ravines almost looked like they were carved out of the earth by the cutting of a giant spade that exposed these tree roots to the air like this there's a certain brutality to the landscape of Elden Ring. Oh, okay. Right? And that has led me... Like, that process led me to much more interesting considerations and much more interesting answers than just, well, it looks like that because his rocks look like that. But instead of saying, okay, well, what could they have done instead? Well, they could have done this, but that wouldn't have worked. Why wouldn't it have worked? Well, because... Because the world of Elden Ring kind of needs to be visually brutal. The world of Elden Ring kind of needs to be visually harsh and stark. The world of Elden Ring can't really be soft in the same way that Breath of the Wild can, for example. And so there is a point to those rock textures. Like, not that, that the art texture artist was sitting there like, Hmm, yes, I shall paint the textures on this rock this particular way because it aligns intellectually with the design goals of the... Like, they probably were like, Okay, I just need to paint a rock texture that looks like it fits with Elden Ring's design aesthetic. Which they did. But then the level designers, and like the art director, and like the creative director, and all the people, like the and all of the people who work together with the texture artist to make the levels, use the assets that the texture artist creates to build something that has some kind of rhetorical or narrative content, right? Like for example, this is a harsh environment. This is a stark environment. This is an environment where it's always fucking raining. Um, and the rocks help sell that vibe, help sell that feeling, along with the crystals, right? Um, like, it all works together in synergy. And that's how I do it. Like, and there's nothing special about that. It's just a game of association. It's just a game of thinking through a thing and then, th like... I have always found it really, really useful to think of the alternatives, right? When you see character design like Renala, right? She is very, very tall. Okay. 
What's the alternative? Well, she could be very, very short. Okay, what would that do to the fight? Like, what would it feel like to fight a Ranala who is, like, half... half as tall as you are, who comes up to your... to, like, your midriff? You can't see my mouse on screen. Oh, that's a problem. I need to fix that before I record again. Um, what would that feel like? Like, how does that alter the fight that you have with her? Doesn't that take away kind of a lot of her grace and dignity and, like, that slow, languid sort of queenly movement aesthetic that she has. Yeah, it kind of would, because she'd have to move a lot, like, faster and more suddenly, and she wouldn't really be credible as that serene moon goddess that she's supposed to be in the fight. Okay, so, like, part of the reason why Renala is as big and as lanky and as distended with those weird, like, proportions, a tiny head on top of giant body, well, that's because that creates a certain feeling. It creates a certain emotional context in which you face her. It gives you a certain emotional relationship to the character. It also makes her look scarier and more powerful. Right? That's the, that's one of the basic design tricks of, of Souls games. Is like, anytime you fight a boss of any kind, if it isn't explicitly framed as, like, another player, like Patches, um, like another human enemy that you're fighting um, in some way, shape, or form, um, like an invader or whatever, Bosses in Souls games are always bigger than you because these games want you to always feel like the underdog. Always feel like you're being overwhelmed, like the odds are against you, so that when you win, it feels that much more satisfying. And making the enemies the same size as you or smaller than you in a boss fight can really seriously badly undercut that feeling. That's why Renala is so tall. Right, And that's when you can get into more granular questions. So like, okay, she's very tall, she's very big, I get that, but then why are her proportions weird, right? Like, why is her head so small? Why are her arms so long? Like, why is she so lanky and distended? And that's when you can talk about, like, well, look at the clothes that she's wearing, those big robes, right? Like, it really sort of, it's almost like a caricature of a wizard. Um, the way that she has these huge robes and, like, her lanky proportions, her long arms, and, like, the giant moon hat on her head that sort of helps even out her proportionality. Okay, like, it's all to sort of support this wizard costume. It's all to support this this slightly alien, otherworldly feeling that she's supposed to have, right? Of of truly being something apart from you. Um, and being a little bit creepy. That also helps, right? Like, that's the process of how you do that. At least the way I do it. Like, there's other, there's other processes, I'm sure. Um, but, like, start by thinking of the alternative. Like, start by thinking about, like, how else could they have done it, and why didn't they? Like, why wouldn't doing it another way have worked as well? Or why wouldn't that have produced the same emotional effect? Why wouldn't that have produced the same narrative effect? Why wouldn't that have felt the same, right, to do? And you can get into some really, like some really interesting observations from there. And you don't have to be me. <laughs> like, you don't have to have my education. You don't have to have my experience. You don't have to, you know, have any of that. Just by being a person, you have a unique perspective. You have a unique way of seeing things that allows you to provide interesting answers to all of the questions I've been sitting here asking. That's kind of part of the point of why I did, like, like the many meanings of Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, and Bloodborne, where I sort of asked people to contribute their own essays about it, was sort of, I really want to drive that point home sometimes. Like, sometimes I, I despair a little bit that people feel like media analysis is beyond them, like it doesn't belong to them, like they can't engage with it, they're not smart enough, they don't have interesting enough opinions, they don't have pers perspective that's worth listening to, because that's not true, it's false. Of course you fucking do. You have an interesting perspective because you're a human being with an int with a unique life. No one else in the universe has your exact set of experiences. That informs everything you create and everything you feel and everything you interpret is, in is, is filtered through those lenses. And that gives you a unique perspective that can be worth listening to if you take the time to develop it, right? Like if you... If you take the time to... to if you th uh, take the time to think about it as worthwhile. Um, I am not fucking special. I really, genuinely, truly am not. I'm good at what I do. 
I've put a lot of fucking work and time and effort into it, but that's the only thing. Like, that's the thing that separates me from anyone else, is I've put more time and effort into it. I put more work into it, because I've been lucky enough to have the, like, space and resources to do that. But if anyone else had the same resources, they could do the same thing. Like, I really, truly, genuinely believe that. Not in exactly the same way. Again, I have my unique perspective that no one else can replicate. But anyone else can do things like what I do. Right? This is not magic. This is craft. This is work. And anyone can do the work. Anyway, uh... Got my Vigor up to 37, or well, 32, I think, without the Scar Seal, which I think is reasonable. I got my Faith up to 17, because I might want to do some things with, um, with something at some point with that. And that's probably good enough for now. Yeah. So, boss designs. I need to edit one, two... It'll be three episodes, probably. In three episodes, I think I will have used all of the footage. In three episodes, I think I will have gone through all of it. Maybe four. And once those are done, it is time to get back into Elden Ring for real. It's time to go back to the Lands Between and play for real. And I, I am so excited to do that. I really want to get back here. I want to explore more. Because like, like I said, I've had other save files, but I have never pushed beyond the boundaries of, of what I've explored in the main game. I have beaten Rey Lucaria so many fucking times. I have beaten Stormville Castle so many fucking times. I am so fucking ready to see what's actually on the Altus fucking plateau. To see what's at Volcano Manor. To explore Kaled a little bit more, perhaps. I want to find Alexander. I think maybe I've missed him. I think maybe I've fucked it on that one. Um... can remove my markers now, by the way. At least for the people. Um, because the game helpfully marks them for you now. Yeah, that's because that's a shopkeeper there. I marked that with a diamond. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little... I'm a little sad the game added the automatic markers, because I find it quite enjoyable to to put down my own, like, to sort of have my own system for marking the map and, like, keeping track of everything. But it is undeniably also a million more times fucking convenient. And then I can focus on using the markers to, like, mark out caves and shit. I like, uh... Whatever. Other stuff. Like this, with the tower. Um... But yeah, that, that, that update, I feel like, was maybe a little bit too handholdy. This is where Rhea was, but she's gone now, I guess. Okay. Um, but yeah, I want to get back to Elden Ring. I want to get back to the lands between. And getting this grinding out of the way. Because I, I knew I wanted to do a little bit of grinding to get those stats up a little bit more. It's just me preparing for that happening. Like, it's still going to be months. It's still going to be months, I'm afraid. Um, but, you know, I, I, I really wanted to play a bit of Elden Ring tonight, and it gave me an opportunity to fucking talk your ear off about bullshit and stuff. So yeah, I will see you when the boss signs of Elden Ring catches up <laughs> with where I am in the game. Bye!